Everyone, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video, I want to go over well, kind of my experience with three different types of Gen 4 NVMe drives. Now, the storage space has been expanding quite substantially over the past year and through my tenure throughout the technology world, and I'm very interested to see how the MSI Spatum M470, the Western Digital SN850, and then the Corsair. MP600 all perform against one another and that's what I want to show you in today's charts and then kind of give you some pricing uh, so that way you can make the best decision for your setup. Honestly in today's modern world you won't really see too much of a difference as far as Windows load times, game load times in the difference of these drives but going from a platter hard drive to an NVMe storage over an SSD or going from SATA SSD to NVMe, you will obviously see a difference. But NVMe drives, they're all gonna be within a few seconds of each other, um, if not nanoseconds. But this is the data that I got so far. So with the 80 benchmark with no GPU load, so there's no thermal issues whatsoever, we saw the Corsair MP600, and this is the first generation MP600. And there's different revisions of this model, and the latest model is even faster um, but with the one that I have here, one terabyte model, and the Spatum and the SN850, uh, they all perform close to each other, but we could see some outliers. So we got 5220 on the reads, 3720 on the writes on the MP600. For the M470, we got 5130 on the reads, 4060 on the writes, and for the SN850, 5870, and 3060 respectively. Now you can see the SN850 is kind of slowing down or not performing as well on the right, but it is outpacing the competition on the reads. Moving on to with a GPU workload, this is where we start to see the handicap. What's happening here is the Corsair MP600 is above the GPU and it's soaking because it comes with a heat sink while the other two do not. Uh, so they're being the other two are being protected by the chipset armor while the MP600 is using this beefy heat sink and it's kind of soaking up all the heat from the GPU. We can see that the reads are really good, but the writes took a huge hit and we'll talk more about that in just a moment um, because there was some inconsistency there. It could be some leaching that I'm having with my software, my operating system, whatever it may be. The MSI uh, NVMe drive got a 5130 again, 4070 on the right, or and then the SN850, 5810, and 3100 on the right. So the SN850 is honestly a good drive for, say, like the PS5 or any type of platform that you're utilizing where you already you got your Steam library and you write it one time. It might take a while to, uh, you know, transfer it over the network to that computer. But once you have your library set up, you're going to have some really good load times and speeds of launching your applications. Uh, then moving on to Gen 3 versus Gen 4. This is the Corsair MP600. So this is when I had my Z390 chipset versus the X570 chipset. And you can see the jump generation to generation because I did a video on does the Gen 3 handicap the NVMe drives. And as you can see, it obviously does because we only got uh, less than 3,500 on the reads and less than 3,400 on the writes. While when we swapped to Gen 4, we got 5220 on the reads and 3720 on the right. But on the Corsair website, they're saying that we should be getting about 4950 megabytes per second reads and 4250 on the right. Again, I have the first revision of this of this particular drive, so this may not be a great comparison. Maybe if I got the latest generation of this Corsair MP600 variant that it would probably perform a lot better. But I do suspect that there's some leaching going on because if we look at the pictures here in the ADO benchmark, you can see what I suspect is thermal throttling or something happening towards the latter part of the benchmark itself. You can see it just drops dramatically to 1.43, 1.32 gigabytes per second. While the reads uh, sustain pretty well, the writes do wind up getting hurt. It could be the cache getting filled. It could be a number of other things that happen. Uh, same thing on a different test, same exact thing. Um, even with crypto, crystal disk mark, you can see that number is very low. And the same thing happened. We're having some irregularities with this particular drive, 
which is my main C drive. So again, it could be operating system leaching, could be some software, some programs causing some issues, whatever it may be. But the access times are still pretty good and within one another as far as the other drives themselves. So moving on to Crystal Disk Benchmark, uh, the MP600 got a 3560 read, a 3681 writes. On the MSI Spatum 470, we got a 4968 read and a 4379 writes. And then the SN850 6240 on the reads, but a 3260 on the right. So again, the SN850 is looking like a really good, you know, once you have all your games loaded on that particular drive for that particular system or, you know, PS5, then you should be fine. Doing any type of heavy file transfer or anything like that um, can hinder you. I don't suspect you see any issues whatsoever because 3260 on the writes is still a lot better than a normal SSD or SATA SSD. Uh, but you know, encoding or any type of heavy workload uh, where you're you're transferring or storing a lot of data or having to write a lot of data really fast um, is going to take some time on the SN850. But its reads are just out of this world. Moving on to temps, we saw without a GPU workload, right? So no GPU uh, causing heat in the system. The MP600 got uh, to a max of almost 60 degrees Celsius. Um, its average was 57. And its minimum was 55 with an ambient air temperature of around 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then we have, or I, I forgot what that is. I think it was like 22, maybe 23 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, forgive me if I'm incorrect on that. Somebody will put it in the comments. The M470 from MSI saw a max of only 51, an average of 47, and a low of 45. And then the SN850 saw a high of 67 a average of 58 and a low of 52. So that honestly could be why we're seeing in these other benchmarks why the drive is performing so low on the rights. It's, it, it could be thermal issues, uh, whereas the Corsair may be filling its cache. It could also be thermal issues, but you take the data how you see it. With a GPU workload, we got these NVMe temperatures up really high, and once these temperatures get to a certain point, they will start to throttle itself to try to you know, keep those temps down. We saw a high of 68 degrees on the MP600, an average of 60, and a low of 53. And then the M470 from MSI, we have a high of 57, an average of 54, and a low of 48. On the SN850, we did see a, a substantial change in thermals. And this, this drive, what's odd is, it's really far away from the GPU and it's being protected by the chipset armor, but it still hit a high of 75 degrees Celsius, an average of 57 and a low of 52. So you could see that during heavy write loads that this drive can throttle itself, which may impact the performance of the writes and bring it down. Uh, because I believe on the website, we should be getting about 7,000 megabytes reads, which we're getting close to that, and about 5,100 megabytes writes. So is that something with your chipset? Is that something with the software that you have installed on your computer? Uh, because we're not hitting the maximums that we should be hitting on these drives. And on the MSI drive, we should be getting 5,000 reads, 4,400 megabytes um, writes. So 5,000 megabytes for reads, 4,400 megabytes writes. And you can see on the ADO benchmark, we're pretty much in that ballpark, but the other two drives are not. What I suspect is happening is we have some leaching coming on from the Corsair MP600 because that's my main OS SSD or NVMe drive. While the WD SN850 may only be getting its performance or its connectivity through the chipset rather than the CPU. Because uh, it is the X570 motherboard with the Ryzen 5900X. Um, and then, you know, it, it could be a number of variables. But will you see this in your system? Will you see this in your system? No. The biggest thing I can say for you, if you're going to plop the SN850 into your PS5 or whatever, is to make sure that you got some type of good cooling, some type of good airflow. Don't put it in an uh, entertainment uh, stand where the doors are closed and there's no airflow whatsoever besides the fan just circulating that hot air. Try to keep it nice and cool. This drive was recommended by a number of outlets or articles for the best NVMe storage drive to use for your PS5. Just be mindful of the temps. Um, because I do have good airflow in my case, but this is behind the armor of the chipset itself or the heatsink for the chipset. Uh, right now, the MSI Spatum M470 is looking the best. 
Uh, but when we start looking at the pricing, it's going to be up to you to make the best decision. For a 2 terabyte Corsair MP600, we're looking right now around 250 bucks. For the 1 terabyte model, we're looking around 125 bucks. On the Western Digital SN850, we got 164 for 1 terabyte or 319 for 2 terabytes. Now, I'm afraid that that might be a third party retailer or reseller on Amazon. So if you can find it for cheaper uh, for your PS5 or whatever, please try to go that route. Otherwise, I'll have links to everything down in the description below. On the MSI Spatum M470, the one terabyte model is going for 120 and the two terabyte model is going for 239. So right now, if I were to pick one and tell you the, the drive that I would go with, it would be the MSI Spatum because not only is it consistent throughout all benchmarks, even if it's not hitting 100% the marks that it shows on the main website, it is getting really close, whereas the other two are not near their, their total threshold or their total market potential that these websites provide or that these manufacturers advise us of. So you're gonna have to make the best decision for you best on your budget. Uh, Paul's Hardware did a very great video on some Black Friday deals, but by the time you're watching this, Black Friday and Cyber Monday already have passed. So just keep your eyes out as the holidays come closer at the end of 2021 for any deals or savings that you could have on these drives. But that is my experience, that's my data, that's my information for the Corsair MP600. I don't know where the box went. The MSI Spatum M470 and the Western Digital SN850. I thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I hope any data in this video may have helped you out. I don't have the best uh, recording or thermal equipment to test, but it is useful to see that you know the SN850 can get really hot, so make sure you got good airflow in whatever system or console you put it in. The Corsair MP600 is a good drive. The latest revision may perform a lot better than what you saw here today, uh, but obviously you gotta account for factors like your operating system, or different programs or software that could be leeching the performance. Uh, but as far as gaming, Windows load times, you're not gonna see a difference. You know, one will load in, in uh, you know, let's say Windows will load in 16 seconds on one drive, while the other one will load in 18 seconds. You're not gonna really see too much of a difference. And that, that's not really a game changer performance. Where you really see the full performance of this is if you're doing a lot of workloads where you're transferring, um, writing, reading, uh, in between workstations across the network or whatever you can really see some really good performance of those drives if you're having to move large files from your main uh, operating system drive or your NVMe storage drive to your lower large NAS or your large local storage that could help you out maybe some other workloads like encoding or projects whatever it may be but as far as gaming and Windows load time not a difference whatsoever but that's going to do it for me today. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date what's going on with the channel. As well as check out some of the links in the description to help support us and what we do here. Definitely hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. What NVMe driver are you using? What is your storage solution? Whether it's Platter, SATA SSD, NVMe, Gen 3, Gen 4, whatever. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And besides that, take care. I'll catch you next one.